A bouquet of flowers stood in the bright sunshine atop a plaque at Hurlburt Field last Friday, where the first Special Operations Wing hosted a ceremony in remembrance of the largest single loss of life for the Air Force in Operation Desert Storm. That loss occurred 30 years ago, on January 31, 1991, when an AC-130H Spectre gunship, one of the Air Force's deadliest aircraft for supporting ground troops, under the callsign Spirit 03 was shot down by an Iraqi surface-to-air missile during the Battle of Kafji. All 14 airmen aboard were killed, but one Air Force general wrote that their sacrifice helped usher in a new era of the AC-130, one where new technology and tactics helped ensure that no gunship has been lost in combat since. We owe much to those who sacrificed everything aboard Spirit 03, not only because they gave the last full measure of devotion for us, but also because they bequeathed to us, at a critical point in history, the decisive motivation to reinvent the AC-130 for a new challenge and a new century, wrote now retired Major General Mark Hicks, a career gunship pilot, in the summer 2014 issue of Air Commando Journal. In an email to Task and Purpose, Chief Master Sergeant Bill Walter explained that after Desert Storm, all AC-130 aircraft were fitted with AN, AAR-44 missile approach warning systems. Those systems detect manned portable air defense manpads, missile launches, warn crews of the threat, and automatically deploy flares. This system works without any crew interaction, which saves precious seconds under fire. The crash of Spirit 03 motivated the widespread implementation of these technologies, Hicks said, but they would not have made much of a difference without developing better tactics, too. Crews re-focused on minimizing their exposure to enemy fire while flying loose, unpredictable orbits around the combat zone that also went to higher altitudes and lowered their chances of getting hit. They also cut out unnecessary crew communication procedures, used better navigation systems and night vision goggles, and got used to breathing through oxygen masks to keep working at high altitudes in the AC-130's unpressurized cabin. These abilities gave crews more flexibility to maneuver and find targets while in combat. Again, improved fire control and better sensors really helped, but it was a commitment to be tactically sound that really made the difference, Hicks wrote. Walter expressed a similar view. The fundamental lesson learned is to always expect to be fired upon when firing, he told Task and Purpose. This rule dates back to the earliest days of AC-130 gunship employment. Though the crew of Spirit 03 was well trained in that aspect, the sun was breaking over the horizon to their east, likely preventing visual acquisition of the inbound manpads missile. Had the crew been able to see the inbound missile, maneuvers and decoy flares would have likely defeated it in a similar way it did for two other AC-130 crew during Desert Storm, he continued. Unfortunately, nobody saw it coming. However, it was also important to avoid overcorrection, Hicks cautioned. Some members of the AC-130 community overreacted to Spirit 03 by avoiding daytime missions entirely, he said. While the slow-moving Spectre is more vulnerable to enemy fire during daylight, Hicks said avoiding daytime missions cost ground troops vital air cover during combat in Afghanistan. Spectres flew in daylight a year before Desert Storm, during Operation Just Cause, Hicks pointed out, and even night flying isn't completely safe. We must always balance our personal survivability, and that of the aircraft we fly, against the utility of the mission, and that decision is the commander's business, Hicks wrote. Unfortunately, Spirit 03 was not the last AC-130 crash. Three years later, in 1994, a Spectre with the 16th Special Operations Squadron crashed off the coast of Kenya when a high-explosive round detonated prematurely in the bore of the aircraft's cannon. Eight crew members died immediately, and a ninth died of his injuries years later. That loss carried its own lessons learned, and over the past 30 years not a single AC-130 has gone down in combat, even though thousands of combat hours during the global war on terror. While the Spectre gunships were retired in 2015, subsequent AC-130 models such as the Spooky, Stinger II, and Ghostrider continue to apply the same lessons learned after Spirit 03 went down. The AC-130 community went to Desert Storm ill-prepared for combat on a modern battlefield, Hicks said. 
We had grown complacent over years of peacetime operations, permissive environments, and little investment in modernization. It was the combination of the motivating impact of the loss of Spirit 03 and advanced technology that enabled the renaissance in tactics through the 1990s, that set conditions for the golden age of the AC-130 gunship in Afghanistan and Iraq. The series of events leading to the loss of Spirit 03 has been studied at great length and is currently part of the training syllabus for AC-130 crew training, he told Task and Purpose. The lessons passed on to crews trained since that fateful day are the true legacy of Spirit 03.